Today we're wrapping up part three of our three-part series where I answer three of the most common questions I get when it comes to building an Ableton Live set with multiple songs. Today we're talking all about time signature changes. What do you do if you have a song with time signature changes and how do you have songs with multiple time signatures in the same live set? So let's start with this song I have here. And in this song, it's open in an Ableton Live set. Uh, you can see I have multiple time signature changes loaded into this file. Now, first off, let's talk about how we handle time signature changes uh, generally in arrangement view. Uh, I'm gonna jump to the end here just so you can see how to add one. If I wanna add a time signature change, I can go down here to the scrub area. You'll see the uh, speaker icon show up. And let's, add, let's make it measure 100. Let's make this three, four. So I'm gonna right click and do insert time signature change and I'm gonna type three slash four, okay? Now I wanna change it back to four, four. So let's go to 101. We'll do insert time signature change and we'll do four, four. Okay, so that's just generally how we add time signature changes into arrangement view. Now let's talk about our song specifically. So we'll undo these that we just did. Now let's take a overview at our song. So within our song, uh, our song is in 4-4. Then we have a segment here that's in 2-4. Then we have uh, another uh, bit that's in 4-4, 2-4, 4-4, 2-4, 4-4. And I think we do maybe one more at the end. Yeah, there's another measure of 2-4. Now, uh, I have added these time signature changes into my song already, but how do I know where they happen? How do I know when I should use them? Now, what I do, I use a click called Foundations for Live, and this is available on my website. I'll put the link in the description. You can purchase it. It's also in the basic tracks template, advanced tracks template, which you can get for free, all three of them, uh, if you become a From Studio to Stage subscriber. But I'll put the link uh, to, to Foundations in the description of this. Now, uh, Foundations is basically a MIDI clip. So uh, click, and these are MIDI clips that I'm using to program uh, samples to trigger audio files. Now, the benefit of doing this is I have pre-programmed sections here based on different time signatures. So let's expand this track so you can see this. Um, but I wanna show you, you actually don't have to buy foundations to do this. Now I think foundations is great, it's the best way to run a click. But if I go into my live set here, this is where my tempo is. Let's go to click. You'll see I have these different segments. So for me, if I have a section of three, four, I'll drop this in right here. That changes the way the grid is programmed. And then what I would do is I'd insert a time signature change here, right? And you can see that lines up with the grid really, uh, really clearly. Now let's get rid of that and let's go back to what we have here. Now I'm using foundations uh, to, yes, be my click track for this. It's a MIDI click. Um, it is uh, playing back the samples here. But even if you don't have foundations, uh, kind of a hack around this is you could create a track and call this time signatures. Now it's not going to save your time signatures in your set, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna be kind of like a, a secondary uh, markers track, if you will, um, to save your time signatures in your set. Let me show you what I just did there. So I created a new MIDI track, Command Shift T. We'll name this time signatures. If I can spell, that would be easier. Then I'm gonna select the entire track from the end to the beginning here. All right, so let's go to the end, to the beginning. Let's do Command Shift M. That's gonna create a MIDI clip. And then what I'm gonna do is just split this clip. So I'm gonna make sure this is unfolded. It's kind of the same process that we've done with our markers track. Then I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do Command D to split it. Then we'll click on this part, we'll do Command R to name it, and we'll say 2-4, okay? Now this part to the left was 4-4, four, four, so we'll right click, we'll do 4 slash 4. And I'm basically just using this as a way to mark where my time signature changes are. So we'll redo this one. Let's jump to this one. Okay, this is 2-4, so we'll split Command-D, Command-R to rename. We'll do 2 slash 4, do Command-D, we'll do 4 slash 4, okay? Split, 2 slash 4, split, we'll do 4 slash 4, okay? And we're gonna scroll, we'll do our final one here. So what I'm doing is showing you basically, even if you don't have foundations for live, uh, you can just use a markers track, uh, a time signature track, if you will, to basically mark your time signature changes. Now I would leave this up at the top of your set here. For the sake of this, I'm gonna leave this at the bottom and you'll see why in a second, I'll save this. Let's go back to my template. Okay, so now we've got a template open. We're gonna use this template to build our set with. As a reminder, if you want a template you can work from, go to fromstudiostage.com slash template. You can download my free tracks template. So let's um, let's drag in a song. Uh, we'll take, let's use this song as our first song here. We'll drag this into our set. Uh, we're just gonna shift a few things around to get this into place. And then we'll bring our song that has uh, time signature changes in after this. So 
let's delete this. We're ready for song two. So we'll move our locator over. We want to make sure we get this right on the exact downbeat of one. Okay, measure 100. That's perfect. So let's go to this song. This is our song with time signature changes in it. So we're going to drop this into our set. It's going to load right below our original song, our first song there, which is fine. But we're just going to cut this. We'll press 2 to jump to locator 2. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to take this part of our song here. Okay, we're going to cut that. We're going to press 2, and then we're going to paste. Okay, so we're going to paste that right into the grid uh, and then delete this extra stuff. Now, I'm going to move up our time signature track for now just because it'll be a good reference point. I have foundations uh, that we've looked at before. That's kind of my marker. Um, as to where time signature changes need to happen. But even if you don't have foundations, again, that's why we do that time signature track there. Now, unfortunately, when we're building sets in arrangement VR, time signatures don't come with our songs, but that's okay. Um, I've had songs that have a lot of time signature changes in. Once I get them to the set, I just kind of leave them and I can shift things around, but uh, it doesn't take too long to add those back in. So let's add our time signature changes to this song. So what we're gonna do is go to foundations or our time signature track to find where those happen. And we're gonna go again to our scrub area, speaker icon, right click. We'll do insert time signature change. We'll do two, four. We'll do insert time signature change and we'll do four, four. Now let's scroll here. We'll do two, four again. Okay, and then this one we'll do four, four. And all I'm doing, I don't have to think about this. I'm not doing math, I'm not counting. I'm just literally going, okay, where does the clip tell me to put a time signature change? And I put that time signature change there. You could also maybe color code these to train your brain to say, okay, this is two, four, this is four, four. But because these stems are warped and because I added this in, uh, my time signature change just uh, changes just pop right into our set like that. Now, that's how we handle a song that has time signature changes. What if our song is in 6-8, six, 6-4, six, what do we do then? Well, it's really simple. All I would do, and I don't think I have a song in 6-8 um, in my live set. Actually, I think I do. So let's take a look at this. We'll drag this over here. Uh, I believe this song here is in 6-8, uh, if I remember. Um, so I'm going to do, do song three here, and then I'm going to right-click, time signature change. I know it's in 6-8, uh, so we'll do 6 slash 8. Okay, and we're going to change our grid for that. Now we'll go back to the browser, and let's drag this song into place. So let's go here. I'm going to drop that in. Then we're going to grab all of this. Okay, and we'll cut it. Press 3. We'll paste and we'll click here to get out of this three and then let's get rid of our time signature track so this paste in place there we go that will drop in exactly the way we need it to so what's cool is i have a, one song here it's in four four song two uh starts in four four and then it goes to two four 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 you can see our time signature changes there and then song three is actually in six eight uh, and all of these drop right into my live set which is great uh, and all of them sync up to the grid and we have our markers and everything is good. So that's how to handle um, having time signature changes in a song in a live set and how to have multiple songs at different time signatures in one live set. Now to learn more about using tracks and again, get that free track template, head to from studiosage.com slash template. And to see more free tutorials like this, make sure you hit subscribe, enable the bell icon so you're notified when we go live. And I post new content every single day at 10 a.m. Central. So just just uh, look at your phone when you see a title pop up and if it sounds like something you're interested in, click through. If not, ignore and you can check out the next day's content. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.